Hey guys and welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. In today's video we're going to be showing you how to create a door in which it is locked by default and to unlock it you have to input the correct pin. So let me hit play and show you what we're going to make today. So we're going to go over, go into first person just as a choice. If I press E on this door it's going to tell me to input a pin. You can obviously customise this to get it to look how you want. I've just done the basic here to show you the fundamentals and the code behind it. And in this example my code is 1906. As soon as I put in the correct code, it's going to come off the screen, press E again, and I can open the door. And if I input the wrong code, nothing is going to happen. So if I just put in four random numbers, nothing will happen. And if I press E again, it will come off screen and all this good stuff. And I can obviously try again, 1906, it'll work. I can open the door and go through. So this is what we make today. Uh, so without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So the first thing you want to do is obviously have your door created. Now I imagine you probably already have this set up, so that's what I've got as well. But if you don't, then I do have other videos going over how to set this up as well. And can obviously help a bit more in the comments down below too. But in this video, it's more about the pin and the keypad rather than the door itself. So basically, viewport, I've got a box collision and the door. In the event graph, I've got how to open the door and the door opening and closing itself. So this is the basic part of what I've got now. What you have doesn't need to be exactly the same as this. Obviously, just make sure you have a door that you can open and close. Now to merge in the keypad into this, what I'm gonna do is create a new variable and I'm gonna name this one unlocked. So I've got an unlocked variable like that, making sure this is a Boolean, so the red value there. Then in between my interact and my gate, what I'm gonna do is add a branch. So this is between pressing E and the door opening. I'm gonna hold down B, left click to get a branch, connecting that in there and the true going into the entry of the gate or just opening of the door. The condition is going to be unlocked like so. So we can only open the door if the door is unlocked. So we can compile and by default this is obviously going to be false because the door is locked by default. So I hope that makes sense as to why we've got that. So now if we try to open the door we won't be able to because it's locked. And so for false it's obviously how we're going to press E to open the code to input the pin and all that good stuff. But once you've done that what we want to do now is create a function. So on the left over here we've got functions. I'm going to hit the plus function and I'm going to name this one add to pin. So we're adding a value to our pin code. And the pin doesn't have to be numbers, it can be letters or a word or anything along those lines. Essentially create this code here. I'm going to select the input of that function, add an input parameter here and I'm going to name this one input or character input or value input or anything along those lines. I'm going to change it from a boolean to a string. So we're going to input a string into this function. Out of the input, I'm going to get an equal equal string. I'm going to right click the bottom of that, promote it to a variable, naming this pin. And I'm going to select that pin. I'm going to tick instance editable and expose on spawn. So we can compile and save that. And now essentially this pin variable here is what the pin of our door is going to be. And because we've made it editable and exposed on spawn, if we select the door in the world, we can change the pin here. So you can have multiple doors in your level, all of which having different pins for each one. And the expose on the spawn means that if you spawn the door in, you can set the pin there as well. So this again just helps keep it nice and dynamic and more efficient, so we can have one door for everything we want. So I'm going to go back in here and I will just set the default value of the door. Actually, I'll set it in here instead just to show you that off. So again, I'm going to have my example as 1906 like so. We're going to go back in my door there because now we have set our pin. You can set it in here as well, but that will be the same for each door. But obviously, just do it how you want. And because we are checking the input to make sure if it is the pin, what we're going to do is hold down B and left click to get a branch with that as the condition because again, we are checking something. So, out of false, we're not going to do anything because the pin isn't correct. But out of true, the pin that the player has inputted is correct. So, what we want to do is we want to set the unlocked Boolean to true. So the door is now unlocked, the player has done what they needed to do. And then I'm going to leave a gap here, and we'll come back to that in a second, and right click and get player controller, like so. And return value of this is going to go into a set input mode game only. Now this will make more sense in a second, and this is just to get back off the screen for inputting the code. And we're going to come out of the player controller again and also set show mouse cursor, leaving that as false as well. Again, that will make more sense in a second. But just do that and we'll come back to that in a minute. 
We can compile and save, and what we're going to do now is we're going to actually create the widget in which we input our pin. So I'm going to minimize this, right click on my content browser, go to user interface, go to a widget blueprint, and I'm just going to name this one keypad widget, like so, opening that up straight away. In here, I'm going to do something very simple. I'm just going to get an editable text. Again, you can customize this to get it perfect for however you want and looking however you want, but I simply just want this editable box in here. The hint text, I'm going to put as please input the pin or your pin or anything like that. And as you can see, all that does is it just puts it there. So this is what the player will see before they actually input the pin. So they know where it needs to be, what they need to do, all that good stuff like that. It's just a nice feature to have. I'm going to hit size to content and I'm also going to change the font size to 40 instead of 9, compiling that to update it. So now we have this nice big input pin here. Again, customize this to get it perfect for you. I'm then also going to anchor it into the middle of the screen like so and just move it into the correct position that I would like. And I think that's going to be good for me. So now I have it so the player can input the pin inside the widget. I'm going to reselect that editable text, scroll down on the right all the way to the bottom and hit the event of on text changed like so. So you can see whenever we change the text, we're going to get this text output here which we're going to use as our pin. So what we also need to do is we need to make sure we have a reference to our door so we can get what we need. So I'm going to hit the plus variable here. I'm going to name this one door ref like so. So it's a reference to our door. And I'm going to change the variable type from a boolean to be the name of our door. So mine is a keypad door BP there. So make sure you get an object reference to the door which you have. And we're going to set that properly in a second, but this will work for the moment. So we can compile, save that, and drag and drop to get a reference to the door there as well. Then we're going to drag out of this, and we're going to call the function of add to pin, like so. Now you can see we have the input there, which we can input, which is going to be the text, and it's going to automatically convert the text to a string, like so. So we can compile and save that, and that is all we need to do in the widget. It is very, very simple. What I've got is a place to input the pin, and when I do input the pin, it's going to update that in the door reference and the door BP as well. So we are updating the pin there so we know what the player has inputted. So I'm going to save and close that widget like so. And now we can go back to the event graph in our door and set it up so the player can start inputting the code properly. And that is going to be off of false of this first branch up here of unlocked, because again, if it's not unlocked, we want to input the pin so we can unlock it. So we're going to come off of false and get an is valid node with the question mark next to it, like so. Off of is not valid, we're going to create widget, like so. And the class is going to be our keypad widget, like so. Now what I'm going to do is control Z because I need to reopen that widget because I actually forgot to do one thing, which is very important. Go back to the graph, select our door reference, and we need to make sure that it is instance editable and expose on spawn, like so. We compile, save, go back to our door BP, put the class as a keypad widget. You can now see we have this door ref here like that. So we can now set the door reference to be the current door we are in to make sure that that works perfectly for how we need it and want it to work. So again, my bad for missing that out, but that's what we need to do. So I hope that makes sense. And again, to make sure this is the correct door, we're going to drag out of door ref and just get a reference to self. So we're setting this variable here. We're setting it to this door reference so we can use it and access this function here. So again, I'm going to close that and go back to my door BP here. We don't need to do anything else for that. And we're going to right click the return value and hit promote to variable, naming this pin widget ref like so. So it's a reference to our pin widget. And now of that, I'm going to add to viewport like so. So we're just adding it onto the screen. And then if we go back to the start of the is valid, the input object is going to be our pin widget ref here. So the reason we've done that is because we want to see if we already have it on screen. So if we don't have it on screen, we're going to create it and add it to the screen. And if we do, so it is valid, we're going to remove it from the screen. Again, that's just a way the player can then take it off the screen if they need to maybe go look for clues to find out the pin. And removing it from screen is very simple. The pin widget ref there and remove from parent instead of add to viewport, connecting that into the is valid there like so. So that should now work perfectly for us for what we want to do and how we want it to work. 
Now after the add to viewport, what we need to do is again make it so the player can use this with their mouse and keyboard. So to do that, we need to right click and get the player controller, like so. And we're gonna come out of this and set input mode game and UI. So very similar to what we did in the function, but this one is game and UI. The in widget to focus is gonna be the widget reference there for our pin widget like so. And we're not going to hide the cursor during capture. You can change the mouse lock mode to anything you want, but I'm gonna leave it as do not lock for the moment. And then we're gonna come out of the get play controller again and set show mouse cursor like that. And we're going to tick it so we are going to show the mouse cursor. And so now what is gonna happen is when we add the widget onto the screen, it's gonna also show the cursor and make sure that the cursor is working in that widget so we can input our pin. And after remove from parent, we're gonna set pin widget ref like so. So just drag and drop on there to set it. And we're gonna leave it as empty like that, which means this is no longer gonna be valid. So again, if it's not valid, which it won't be by default, we're gonna create it and make it valid, add to the screen, and then allow the player to use that widget. And then if it is valid, which will happen after this, we're gonna take it off the screen so the player is pressing E again to remove the widget and then make it not valid anymore. So again, the next time it will go through this. So I hope that makes sense. We're just making it valid and not valid to make it work for toggling on and off for how we want. And then also after we've done that, we again need to make sure that we're setting the input mode and the mouse cursor back to what it should be, which again we did in this function already. So we just select that, control C and control V back here, just to use it and copy and paste it like so, just to make our lives a little bit easier. Which again is gonna make the input mode game only now instead of game and UI, and make sure we are not showing the mouse cursor like so. So I hope that all makes sense to you. And if we go back into our add to pin function one final time, what we're gonna do is just remove the pin widget from the viewport. Because again, if we've got the correct pin, we don't want it to be on screen anymore. So drag and drop the pin widget reference there and drag out of it and get a remove from parent like so. Connecting that into the middle there, which is what we left that gap for. So now we compile and save and this should be the code now done for us. Because let me just run you through this again. What we've got is if the player presses E to open the door and it is locked, what's gonna happen is the widget will be put on screen so the player can then input the pin. And when the player is inputting the pin, so let me just open that up again. When the player is inputting the pin in this editable text here, it's gonna be adding that to a function, which we have here, of just the player input pin, checking that to see if it is the correct pin. And if it is, it's gonna unlock the door and take that back off the screen, obviously. And once the door is unlocked, they can press E again to open the door like so. So I hope that all makes sense to you. We can minimize and hit play to test this out double checking we have the pin in here, which we do. So for me, it's 1906. So I'm gonna hit play, go over here, press E, please input the pin, press E again, it comes off screen. If I press E, put in 1905, that's not gonna work. If I press E again, it comes off screen, all that good stuff. But if I put in 1906, it comes off the screen automatically, press E again, and the door is gonna open perfectly like so. So this works perfectly for us. What we've got is a system in which we have a door which is locked by default and we can unlock it using a pin which we've set up, which again can be different for each individual door like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.